الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإن the introduction of القواعد الفقهية legal maxims we've spoken about the definition of al-qawaid al-fiqiyah the reality of al-qawaid al-fiqiyah where is qawaid al-fiqiyah taken from we've also touched on the history and the formation of al-qawaid al-fiqiyah And last week, we started by talking about the, what did we speak about? Uh, we started and we spoke about that there are five qawaid, which the scholars, they call it what? They call it the qawaid, the legal maxims which are asked big the supreme legal Islamic maxims the reason why they call that is because all the scholars agree upon it from all of the madhabs we took the first one which is al-umuru al-umuru bi maqasidiha we took that last week today inshallah ta'ala we're gonna go into the next one which is al-yaqeenu la yazulu bi shak Certainty cannot be removed with doubt. Al yaqinu, certainty, la yazulu bi shak, it cannot be removed with what? It cannot be removed with, it cannot be removed with doubt. So certainty cannot be removed with doubt. Al yaqin is certainty, it cannot be removed with doubt. What does al yaqin mean? Al yaqeen means it means certainty, something you're sure, something you're certain about, you're hundred percent sure. And a shak means what? A shak means when many things you don't know which one is right from which. You cannot put your finger on which one is right. You can't put your finger on what it really is. Al-Yaqeenu, certainty cannot be removed with shak. If you can stre strengthen one over the other, then it's not called shak. Are we all together? It's called van. Van means what? Okay. Sixty percent, you're sure. Hey, yeah. this sixty percent that you're sure is called van. It's called what? Van. If you can't, it's fifty-fifty. I don't know which one. Fifty-fifty. Or it's seventy. If it's seventy, it's van. Eighty, it's it's van. If it reaches 100%, it becomes certainty. Sah? What about if it's 40? Some scholars, they say, the 40 here is waham. The 30% here is waham. 20% here is waham. Are we all together? It's called waham. But if you can't strengthen one from the other, you can't say this is what it is and this is what it's not, it's called shak. What is it called? It's called shak. You can't remove it with the certainty that's already there. You can't. You can't remove the certainty with a shak, a speculation. Ma'anaha, the meaning of this principle is أن المرأة إذا كان عنده جزم بالقلب بثبوت شيء أو انتفائه 
فلا يصح أن يتركه لوجود شك طرأ عليه بل يعمل بيقينه الأول ولا يلتفت للشك الطارئ If a person جزم بقلبي بثبوت الشيء In your heart there's a conviction unwavering conviction in your heart that something is like this or it's not بثبوت الشيء أو انتفائه or it's not I'm a hundred percent sure this is not or I'm a hundred percent sure it is فلا يصح at that point it is not correct أن يتركه لوجود شك a doubt that somebody threw at you you shouldn't remove the certainty because of it طرأ عليه that being thrown at you بل يعمل but the, rather the person he acts upon which one بيقينه الأول the certainty that you had at the beginning you hold on to that ولا يلتفت للشك الطارئ and don't look at the the doubt that threw itself at you let me explain this to you you went and you did wudu you went and you did you did wudu after you did wudu you came to the masjid you prayed your salah and then you sat down and you called your family and a while went by and then duhur came and you said do I still have my wudu or did I break my wudu question here is are you sure that you did wudu huh that's shay which is mutayaqan something you know out of certainty that you did wudu whether you broke it or not is a shak what is it it's a shak it's a doubt don't remove the certainty with this doubt the certainty still stands the certainty what it still stands the evidence for this principle what's the evidence for this qaida what is the delil for this qaida the delil for this qaida is the hadith that's on the board for you if you could just look at the hadith everyone what does the hadith say the hadith says إِذَا وَجَدَ أَحَدُكُمْ فِي بَطْنِهِ شَيْئًا if someone finds something in his stomach your stomach is growling it's making noise فَأَشْكَلَ عَلَيْهِ doubt enters your heart أَخَرَجَ مِنْهُ شَيْءٍ did something come out of you فَأَشْكَلَ عَلَيْهِ doubt entered you did something come out أَمْ لَا or it didn't the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said فَلَا يَخْرُجْ أَمَا فَلَا يَخْرُجَنَّ he should not come out من المسجد حتى يسمع صوتا أو يجد ريحا masjid here means the salah he shouldn't come out of the prayer the masjid here means what the word masjid sometimes is used at the word salah right can only give us another example when Allah says خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ in the ayah خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ ها masjid is mentioned in the ayah it means every salah so when you're in the salah you're praying and your stomach makes noise okay and you say oh no did I pass wind or not the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to you don't leave the salah when can you leave the salah when do you leave the salah حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ صَوْتًا until you hear a noise that comes from you أو يَجِدَ رِيحًا or a smell comes to you this is now certainty what is it it's a it's a what it's a certainty it's a it's a certainty this salah that I'm in the wudu that I had was it not a certainty I can only remove that certainty with another certainty as strong as it does that make sense that's the evidence for this are we all together brothers now I want to mention a mas'ala a issue that I want all of you to write is can we as a side point everybody write this 
can you base evidences on 60 or 70%? What was 60 or 70% called? Van. Sah? Did we, I just mentioned it, right? Van, can you, bla- can you base a hukum shar'i on van? High speculation. Can you? Are you allowed to? Yes, you can. Van, which is 60 or 70%, you can base what? You can base a hukum shar'i on it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 200 and, 230. Ayah 200 and, 30. Allah says, فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا If the man divorces his wife. This is after he's finished all of the iddah. So she's finished all of the iddah. And he, sorry, he's finished all of the talaq. He's finished all. He divorced how many times? Three times. So he's finished. The message Allah says in the ayah, فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا If the man divorces her. فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ It is not, she's not permissible for him. حَتَّى تَنْكِحَ زَوْجًا غَيْرَهُ Until she goes and marries another man. He divorced her. He finished it. He said it again and again three times. Now she has to go and get married to who? She has to go and get married to another, another man. This man that she has to get married to, it can't be an agreement that her and her husband had. No, he, she has to genuinely wants to get married. Are we all together, brothers? And they also have to have intimate relationship. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Until they have intimate relationship. Are we all together? Now pay attention. The ayah then went on to say, if she got married to another man, and when she got married to that man, she didn't like that man. She wanted her own her old husband, her ex-husband. So she left him. She wants to come back to her old husband. Allah says, فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا If the new husband divorced her, فَلَا جُنَاحَ There is no harm. عَلَيْهِمَا On both of them, أَن يَتَرَاجَعَا To come back. She got married again. To, she left her husband, uh, the other one. She wants to go back to her hu- ex-husband. Allah said there is no harm for them to come back together. In ranna an yuqima hudud Allah. If they have high speculation that they're both going to be within the boundaries of the Sharia, meaning they're both going to fear Allah in each other's rights. What did the ayah say? In, in vanna. If they both have what? High speculation. She thinks if she goes back to her husband, that he's going to take good care of her and he's going to look after her and she can fulfill his rights. She's going to fulfill, fulfill his rights. And he believes that when he gets married to her, he's going to fulfill her rights and give her what she wants. If that happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he then says they can get back together. So the ayah, what is it saying? That the hukum is based upon here what? Van here. Van is not here, shak. It's not shak. What is it? It's more than that. Shak, it means that they're equal. Like in van is higher. Are we all together, brothers? Does everyone understand? Does that make sense? Okay. I want to mention... Another thing which is Al-Amalu bil dhan Acting According to dhan What did I just say? Are you allowed to do Are you, are you allowed to act upon dhan? What did I just say? Yes you can There's a type Of dhan That you can act upon Masail Yu'malu fiha bil dhani some masail, some issues you act upon dhan, which is the one I gave you right now. Are we all together? Does that make everyone understand? Does it make sense? Okay. I want to give another example. 
Another example. A man divorced his wife. What did he do? He divorced his wife. He said, I divorce you. When he divorced his wife and they went their separate ways, the man came back and he said, I never divorced you. I never ever divorced you. What are you talking about? Wallahi, I never divorced you. She says, I have two witnesses. That day when you divorced me, two witnesses were sitting there. Let's go to the Qadi. Let's go to the judge. He goes, come, let's go to the judge. They stand in front of the judge. He says to the judge, judge, I am certain that I was married to this woman. Are we all together, brothers? Everyone is, I got witnesses that I married this woman. She knows I got married. Did I marry you? Yes. I have witnesses from the local community who knew the, the day the nikah was done. She wants to remove that certainty with something two witnesses only believe. And I have two, three hundred people came to my nikah and wedding. Yay. And she wants to remove the validity of this nikah that we had based on two witnesses. Hey, what happens here? What does the judge do? It's true that he did was he was married to her. That's yaqeen, certainty. He was married to her. He's saying this one is not it's not hundred percent, no. But it's dhan. She got two witnesses who had two reliable witnesses. It's not shak. This one is what? Ban. What do we do? Do we dismiss the yaqeen that was there, which is that he married her and the nikah was valid and it was done? And we take the, the two witnesses? Bi ijma'i ahli al the two witnesses are taken. Consensus. There's no difference of opinion in that. Ijma. We moved away from a yaqeen, a certainty, and we took a what? Dhannul ghalib. High speculation. Because the job of these two witnesses is that they say, well, they're reliable. No one, could, no one can question their integrity. Are we all together, brothers? We'll take those two witnesses and we'll say it's gone. There is a possibility that two witnesses can be wrong. They're not ma'asumeen, they're not ayah from the Quran or the Sunnah. Lakin ghalabatu dhan. Are we all together, brothers? Ghalabatu? This is not mas'ala mukhtalaf fi. I said it's ijma'. There's no difference of opinion. It's ijma'. Okay? Keep that in mind. So here, what did we act upon? Yu'malufiha bidhani. The dhani is being implemented here. Masail la yu'malufiha bidhani. Masail, where you don't act upon dhan. Are we all together, brothers? You do not act upon dhan. For example, is the hadith that you get in your stomach. So you are passing the wind. This person is in the salah. His stomach grumbles. He doesn't smell, nor does he hear anything. But the, he has a doubt. Did I just pass my wind? Just pass wind. My stomach's fine. No grumbling anymore. He has a high speculation that he might have passed wind. But he didn't smell it. He didn't hear it. And he's sure that he had wudu. What do we say to him? We say to him, act upon the certainty that was there. The dhan here is not, it's not acted based upon it. لا يعمل به Are we all together? Now I want to go into القواعد المندرجة تحت هذه القاعدة I want to go into other principles 
that fall under this qaida other principles that fall under this principle al yaqinu la yazulu bil shak other principles that also come out from it before i go into this i'll we'll leave it because it's too deep too much details i don't want to go into it and confuse you al qawaid al mundarija Principles that come under al yaqinu la yazulu bishak. By the way, this qaida is from one of this, one of the qawaid al khamsat al kubra. It's not a little qaida; it's a big qaida. So many qawaids fall under it, and he enters many chapters. What does he enter? Many chapters. He enters many, many, many chapters. But I've only just chosen three, just to make it easy for you. From the qawaid that fall under it is. الأصل في العبادات المنع. The أصل, the default position. What is it? What is it? Of عبادات. What is the default position for عبادات? That is prohibited. Pay attention to this, yeah. Here الأصل it means what? The default position. This. Certainty. What we're certain about in ibadat is what? That is prohibited. Why? Pay attention to this. When a person does a ibadah, why are they doing it for? What is the purpose of doing it? To get closer to Allah, for Allah to love you, for Allah to take you to Jannah, for it to distance you from the hellfire. These are the reasons why people do ibadah, true or false. Correct? If you do this ibadah, okay, and you're hoping to get those, that's speculation. What is it? Shak. Whether those things are going to get you closer to Allah, whether it's going to take you to Jannah, speculation. All of that speculation. It's based upon what? Shak. The certainty is that Allah only legislated the path that Nabi Muhammad took. Are we all together, brothers? You can't leave that certainty for something that's speculative. That's all speculation. Are we all together, brothers? That's how it falls under this qaida. Does that make sense? The asal of ibadat is al man'u. You can't do this. You're not allowed to do a ibadah unless you have evidence for it. You can't worship Allah in any way, shape, or form unless you have evidence for it. Now, I want to mention something. When we say that you can't do a ibadah and it's not allowed unless you have an evidence, the prohibition of doing a ibadah is divided into two. The first one is Aslul Ibadah. This, this Ibadah itself, you have to get who, who, who did this act, Ibadah, the origin of this Ibadah. You are actually making a new Ibadah that did never exist. You're creating it. It doesn't exist. It's a made up Ibadah. This one is prohibited as well. It's prohibited. Are we all together, brothers? The second type of ibadah that's also prohibited is Kayfiyatul Ibadah. Which is, this ibadah exists. You're right, it exists. But you've made it into a how that Allah and His Messenger didn't sanction. That's also prohibited. Are we all together, brothers? I'll give you an example of, the, each, of each one. The first one is celebrating the Prophet's birthday. This ibadah is not permitted. Aslan. It's a made up ibadah. This is aslul ibadah. Aslul ibadah is made. It needs the evidence. You're not allowed. Where did the issue of celebrating a birthday? This is a made ibadah. Are we all together, brothers? This one, the scholars, they call it bid'ah haqiqiyah. 
This one is called bid'ah. Ibafiya. Which basically means the ibadah does exist. But this individual, he's, he's doing this ibadah in a way that the messenger didn't do it. For instance, the khatib, he's doing khutbah. And when he does khutbah, after he finishes the khutbah, and he concludes the khutbah, what does he do? He makes, he makes, he makes dua, supplication. He makes dua. He does dua. The khatib lifts his hand up and he says, Allahumma gfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi. He lifts his hand up. And he's the khatib, he's standing over there, he's doing the khutbah and he raises his hand. Now raising your hand in dua is established. Oh yeah, it is established. Because the Prophet did it in witr. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in dari in salat al istisqa. He did it the day of battle of, battle of Badr. إِتَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ أَنِّي مُمِدُّكُمْ He raised his hand until the uh, upper garment of the Prophet fell from him. Salawatullah. He's raising his hand high up. He also made dua. Nabi Allah Muhammad made dua on the pulpit. But he never raised his hands. In this particular place, you're right. Raising your hand for dua was established in other places, but not in this place. In this particular place, no. The same way, if you're going to the toilet and you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubithi wal khabaith, can you raise your hand? Is it not dua? Is it not dua? Of course, it is dua. Why did a lot of you guys smile? Because nobody does that, right? But raising your hand for dua is a legislated sanction thing. Yes, I agree with you. But not here. Are we all together, brothers? Does that everybody understand here? So sometimes people say that the ibadah is originally permitted, so why can't I do it in whatever form or way I want it? We'll say you have to follow the Prophet also in the way that he did it. In the form he did it. Are we all together brothers? Am I making sense here? Be well aware of that. Both of them are bid'ah. And a lot of the bid'ah brothers is bid'ah idhafiyah. This is the one that tricks the most people. They forget even the number is a ibadah. The number is a ibadah. Are we all together, brothers? For instance, the sunnah before fajr is how much? Can I make it more? You see that, brothers? Are we all together, brothers? Because this is number, it's no. What about if you say, but you know, Isha's four. Why can't I just make the sunnah before Fajr is four as well? The number is also something you need to follow the messenger in. If you make it more than two, you're doing a bid'ah now. Are we all together, brothers? Does that make sense? The person turns around after doing the, the salah, he leads the salah, he turns around, takes a microphone, and he makes dua for everybody. And everybody raises their hand after salah. It's a bid'ah, idhafiyah. It's a bid'ah, idhafiyah. Meaning, originally doing dua in congregation, in taraweeh for instance. Uh, it's permissible because the messenger did it there. But he didn't do it after the salah. Everyone does it for them. You do yourself. Are we all together brothers? This is where the shaitan tricks many people. Now we're going to go into the next one, which is Al Aslu fil Ashia in Ibaha. The Asal of things is permissibility. Things here we mean the people's customs, the people's norms is permissibility. You can use any technology you like, it's permissible. Are we all together? Because it's not an ibadah. Like the ibadah is prohibited until proven otherwise. 
لكن when it comes to worldly issues the asr is permissibility you can dress in whatever way you want you can wear whatever you want as long as it does not go against what a shar'i matter does that make sense the ibah has the asal if so, two people are arguing you can't wear these clothes or you can wear these clothes the one who says you can't has to provide the evidence if two people are arguing you can't eat this food and the other one says no you can the one who says you can't eat has to bring the has to bring the evidence because you're allowed to eat whatever you want until proven otherwise are we all together brothers you're allowed to because the yaqeen and the certainty is that it's what that Allah permitted it the doubt could be maybe this might fall under the things Allah prohibited you have to remove that that shak from us are we all together al aslu bara'at dhimmah the third one is the asal is everyone is innocent until proven otherwise no one's guilty everyone is what innocent until proven otherwise al aslu bara'at dhimmah an example for that is someone is accusing a person of borrowing their money i gave you some money huh i borrowed you some money and he looked at you and said no you didn't the answer is i'm innocent until you prove otherwise are we all together brothers the asal is bara'atu bara'atu dhimma that the person's innocent until proven otherwise bara'atu dhimma means you are free from what you've been accused on or accused of innocency is the asal and anyone who wants to remove that default position the certainty doubt is not enough doubt is not enough bayina 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 it's been clear clear things we're all together brothers you can't remove certain persons innocency with speculation and assumption but maybe but what was he doing at that time but why was he like that at that why was he wearing those clothes why was he driving like that all of those are what those are all shak speculation inshallah ta'ala we're going to go into the fourth qaida is it the fourth third qaida ah, okay now we're going to go into the we're going to go into the third qaida the third qaida which is al mashaqqa to tajribu taysir al mashaqqa tajribu taysir again is this term al mashaqqa to tajribu taysir is it right to say it or is it not a lot of the scholars of usul al fiqh they are actually against they are against this qaida on the wording they don't like that wording and I don't want to go into that for now I do not want to go into I don't want to go into that now what does it mean al mashaqqatu tajribu taysir ma'naha the meaning of it is al su'ubatu wal ana'i allati yajiduha al mukallif fi tanfeed al hukm shar'i tasir sababan shar'iyan sahihan lit tashhir wa takhfif anhu the hardship that a person indoors the hardship that the person encounters in fulfilling a jurisprudent ruling makes it a legislative islamic legislation it makes it a it makes it a sabab shari a sharia based reason for the matter to be made easy for the person let me say in simple terms anything which difficulty and hardship enters the sharia gives you a way out it uplifts that burden of you and it makes it easy for you anything that becomes hard and complicated and difficult on a person are we all together this now becomes it becomes easy in the ma'al usri Yusra. 
What's the evidence for this principle? What's the delil for this qaida? Many evidences. There are what? There are many evidences. The scholars they say the evidences for this qaida is categorized into how many? It's categorized into? It's categorized into three. Pay attention. The evidences for this qaida is categorized into how many? Three. Write this down, everyone. The evidences for this principle is categorized. It's categorized into into three. The first one is مَا وَرَدَ مِنْ أَنَّ الْحَرَجَ مَنْ فِيٌّ فِي الشَّرْعِ The texts, the texts that state and say hardship is uplifted from a person. The texts which say hardship is negated and is uplifted. And I gave the example where Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yuridu Allahu bikumul yusra, wala yuridu bikumul usra. Yuridu Allahu bikumul yusra, wala yuridu bikumul usra. Allah wants ease for you, and He doesn't want hardship for you. This ayah is uplifting hardship. It's telling us there's no, Allah doesn't want that for us. Inna ma'al usri, yusra. That's the first type of evidences. The second types of evidences for this principle is ما ورد من تعليل بعض الأحكام الشرعية بالتيسير. Some jurisprudent rulings the Sharia stated is for it. There are some. Allah mentioned the ruling. Allah states a ruling of an issue, and after that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He mentions ease. This is easy for you. And the third type is istiqra'i ahkam al-shari'a. Anyone who does induction, induction means what? Following up all of the evidences in the Quran and the Sunnah. If you look at it, you will realize that Allah, who's re- Allah who Azza wa Jalla's religion, is here to bring ease and good and benefit for you. And to repel and push away from you hardship and what? And to repel from you hardship. Those are the three forms in which the principle can be established. We don't want to go too much details into that. Okay. But I only mentioned one evidence for you, which is Yuridu Allah bikumul yusra. Allah wants for you what? Allah wants for you what? Allah Azza wa Jalla wants ease for, for you. Yuridu Allah. Allah wants. Bikumul Yusra, he wants for you ease. You read Allah Bikumul Yusra. Wala you read Bikumul Yusra. Asbabu Tahfif. Here we're going to go into Asbabu at Tahfif. The reasons why the Sharia will give ease to you. When are the times when you will be given ease? And the burden and the difficulty will be uplifted. When? 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 Every time? These are the seven. Okay? These are the seven times when difficulty and hardship is up. It's uplifted. Is what? It's uplifted. The first one is a safar. Traveling. Traveling is is brought and difficulty is what is repelled is pushed away there's many things I can say here I can go into but I don't want it to I want to make it easy a lot of you guys seem very tired traveling traveling when can something or when can it be considered traveling Scholars, they have views. The views of the scholars can be categorized into two. Two views when it comes to traveling. 
the first view of scholars they said that traveling is restricted like traveling is a restricted thing we know what it is are we all together and the second view is that the concept of traveling is not restricted but rather it goes back to the custom of the people whatever the people consider to be traveling is traveling and what they don't consider to be traveling is not going to be tra traveling and remember this concept of custom we're going to be taking it in the the fifth qaida inshallah ta'ala which is al-ada muhakama we're going to be taking it there so traveling the scholars how many views do they have two views what's the first view that the concept of traveling is restricted the second view is un it's unrestricted it refers it goes back to what the custom of the people the first view what was it again restricted there is two views the first view is broken into two views the ones who said it's restricted the scholars who said that the traveling is restricted their view is, is broken into two one group of scholars that said is restricted to a distance oh and we didn't know there's so many views restricted to a what a distance that distance is traveling and a second group they restricted it to a period as in if it's day then they said traveling and some said no it's not if it's two days or three days are we all together those are the two views those who restricted it either to timing or distance and the second view is those who said it's unrestricted and it goes back to the custom of the people and the strongest of the opinion is the second one the latter of the two which is that the concept of traveling goes back to the custom of the people because the sharia didn't give us a definition to traveling it didn't tell us this how long it is since it, sharia hasn't we go back to the people's customs okay now come back traveling is a what so the person is being given a what is given the rights if you want to break your fast you can and if you don't want to it's your choice suffer it uplifts the burden from you well the, the, the scholars who said that this qaida al mashaqqatu tajribu taysir is not good they said traveling in it is what hardship right is it not what about if the person travels and they don't go through hardship does that mean they cannot break their fast are we all together brothers so those scholars they said this qaida is not good because a lot of the th hardship Praying Fajr is hard. The concept of mashaqa, it can't be narrowed down. Rather, some of the ibadat, they were pushed on top of us, even though it's hard. Kutiba alaykum al qitalu wa huwa wa kurhu lakum. Are we all together? That the jihad was made obligatory on you while it's what? While it's a burden on you, hardship on you. Are we all together, brothers? Am I making sense? Huh? Ah, very important that you understand that. So this is the, that's why the discussion of the qaida is back and forth. The second is al marad. If a person is sick, is al ikrah. Al ikrah means what? Al ikrah is a person to be coerced. Coercion is a what? It's a Somebody tells you, uh, eat khamar, uh, sorry, drink khamar or eat dead animal. And they have a gun on your head. How you do it? And you say it. Allah gives you that ease. Use it. Benefit from it. 
ولذلك when the, when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to Amar ibn Yasir, Amar came, he said, Ya Rasulullah, they told me to insult you, and I did it. And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, كيف وجدت قلبك? How are you? How is your heart, Amar? When they told you to insult me, how did you find your heart? And he said, Mutma'innun bil iman. My heart was tranquil on iman. I believed in you and I believed in Allah. Then the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, فَإِنْ عَادُوا فَعُدْ If they do it to you again, do what you did. If they say to you, insult Muhammad again, do it. As long as it doesn't go to your heart. And then the ayah came down, إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِهَ وَقَلْبُهُ وَقَلْبُهُ مُطْمَئِنٌ بِالْإِيمَانِ The only person who doesn't become a disbeliever is the one who's been put under coercion. Are we all together? Ah. Ikrah, lakin. The ikrah cannot be something equivalent to what is being told to you. So, for example, somebody put a gun on your head and said, "Hey, go kill another person. Go kill your wife." You said, "Okay, I will." You can't go home and shoot your wife and say, "I have to do it to save my life." Your life is not more valuable than her life. Are we all together? You can't. Does that make sense? You, a gun was put to your head and you were told to rape another person. This is not, this is no way, shape or form permitted. I'll take the questions to the end. Al-jahlu. Al-jahlu means ignorant. For example, somebody swore by Allah. He said, Wallahi, I'm never going to go to Shahid's house. Wallahi, I won't. And then I got tricked. Somebody tricked me and said, come, I'm going to take you somewhere. And then I didn't know. And I walked into the house and like, uh-oh, you're inside Shahid's house. Sah? I'm jahl, I have ignorance, I don't know. Right now the Sharia uplifts the oath that I made because of ignorance. And Nisyan, I forgot. You did something you forgot. Just the same place, I, I went to the house because I forgot. Again, it's uplifted from you. The next one is an naqsu An naqsu means um, the woman who's on her menstruation. An naqsu means a woman who's on, on her menstruation. Okay, or a, a crazy person. Or a baby, a child. All of them. Allah didn't say to the majnoon person, well, sorry, you still have to pray. Allah didn't say to the little child who doesn't know anything, you know what, no, you still have to pray. The woman who's on her menstruation, Allah didn't say, you know what, forget, I still have to pray. No, no, no. That be- because they're going through an issue, Allah uplifted that stress and hardship from them. Just deal with your issue. Are we all together? Last but not least is Al-Usru wa Umumul Balwa. Something that has a harm in it. Like for example, you go to a shop and you say to the owner of the shop, Oh, I'm going to buy this batikh from you. You all know what a batikh is, right? Watermelon. I'm going to buy the watermelon from you. But slice it open so I can see what's inside it. I won't really want to look at it. Well, if he does that to all of his batikhs, it's going to be a problem for him. Are we all together, brothers? That's going to cause him what? Harm. Are we all together, brothers? So you have to buy it based on what? The Sharia has given him, uplifted that burden from him. That he can sell it with it being... Are we all together? Or example, this concept of umum al-balwa, that some of the scholars they talk about is, some rulings can change from prohibition to permissibility based on umum al-balwa. Al-usru umum al-balwa. There's no way out of it. Like some of the scholars, they said, picture. It's haram, but because it became umum, there's no way to stop it. Everyone has it on his phone. There is nothing you can do. Al usru umum al balwa. They said, al mashakatu, al mashakatu tetlibu taysir. There's nothing you can do. Every ID they need is from you, and this car, this company is going to ask you for this one and this one and that. And when you go, somebody's going to take a picture of you. Someone's going to do this to you. They said the rule it can't change because of that. All of this has more details of a discussion. We're not unraveling the discussion like that. 
Anwa'u takhfif The types of takhfif The types We mentioned the reasons We want to talk about The ways that the sharia And the types in how it uplifts it In what ways does he do it The first one is What's the first one? Uh, the first one is al-isqat Al-isqat means what? It's to remove it and an example for that is the woman who's, who's on a menstruation. The salah is fully removed from her. That's, the, that's one type. It's no partial removal. Partial removal is no. The woman doesn't say, okay, I'll pray half of dhuhr, half of asr. Or I'll, pray, I'll fast half of the day and I'll relax the next half of the day. No, this is isqat. It's fully dropped. Fully dropped. The second one is, Yunqas, it's reduced. It's not removed fully, but it's tanqis. It is what? Reduced. Like the traveler, he prays too. Dhuhr, he prays too. Isha, he prays too. Allah didn't say, you're a traveler, ha. Huh? You're like the menstruation woman, don't need to pray. No, no. You pray, but it's reduced. That's one form of takhfif. It's one way of making it easy. Taqdeem Taqdeem Is that you're allowed to bring it forward You will know the hadith uh, Sorry, the salah, the salah to taqdeem When you're a traveler Can you bring dhuhr? So now it's dhuhr time, can I bring asr earlier? Yeah, I can do jam'u taqdeem Come by, dhuhr comes in, I'm a traveler I bring asr I bring it early That's jam'u taqdeem And the opposite here is jam'u Ta'khir, ta'khir means to what? To delay. That's also one of the anwa' of takhfif. What I can do is, I'm going to miss the dhuhr. I don't want to pray dhuhr now. I'll pray when asr comes in, inshallah. Because I'm a traveler. I can also do that. Tarkhis. Tarkhis is what? Is to be given a rukhsa. You have the choice. It's up to you. It's a what? It's a rukhsa. You have a Rukhsa, uh, and that's like the fasting for the traveler. It's a rukhsa. If you want, you can fast, and if you want, you can leave. It's a what? It's a rukhsa. Or let's, let's, let's even. Rukhsa. What's even better is. Aklul lil mubbar. Eating haram things just because of a state of necessity. Rukhsa. Something that was haram was, is being made halal for you. Like for example, eating pork. You're about to die. Just to live. That's, that, that's better to call tarkhis. And what's the next one? Taghir means to? It is to change. An example for that is Salatul Khawf. The Salatul Khawf changes based on the army and how close the army that they're fighting is Salatul Khawf changes huh? Salatul Khawf changes based on on the army is the battle very severe and is it intense or is it not it changes and we spoke about in the shara of Durarul Bahiyya the next one is and the final one is Ibdal Ibdal means what? Take the Sharia it doesn't drop it from you, but it exchanges one with the other. And that's like at tayammum in the place of wudu for the one who can't use water. Are we all together? Or the one that doesn't have water. It's not fully removed from him, ibdal, but one ibadah is exchanged with another ibadah. All of these are the forms of anwa'u takhfif that the sharia has given you. Now we're going to talk about anwa'ul mashaqqa, the types of hardship. Okay, the types of hardship. Mashaqqa la tanfaqu anil ibadah. The first one is a hardship that does not separate from the ibadah. It's attached to this ibadah. So it's mashaqqa la tanfaqu anil ibadah. You can't detach it from the ibadah. You can't. And I gave an example before, which is jihad. 
Hardship for jihad is always what? Jihad can never just be walking in the park. Sah? It's going to be hardship. Okay? Important. Oh, hajj. Someone goes, Wallahi, hajj, I can't do it. There's mashakka in there. Al taysir. Now we say, hajj, you can't detach it from hardship. Are we all together? Good. Fasting. Someone goes, Wallahi, me, I always eat. And I eat six times a day. I can't fast. Al-Mashakatu Tajribu Taysir Sahabu Salah Al-Mashakatu Al-Mashakatu Tajribu Taysir The scholars they say Mashakatu La tanfaku anil ibadah This type that cannot be detached from the ibadah Ghayra mu'tabara Yo, oh, there's hardship in there Stop whinging, do it Stop whinging Do it brother That's not the hardship that is removed. Are we all together, brothers? Does that make sense? The second type is Mashaqa Tanfaku Anil Ibadati Ghaliban. It's a type of hardship that detaches from the ibadah the overwhelming majority of times. Ghaliban. Majority of the times it is detached from the ibadah. And this is divided into three Azima, Severe, Khafifa, very easy. Mutawasita in the middle. And all this, by the way, is غير منضبط. I told you before. Mashaka cannot really be narrowed down. But just in Mimbabi Tasheel, it's just to make it easy for you all. Okay? Let me repeat the second one again. Hardship تنفكو عن العبادة It can be detached from the ibadah the majority of the times. The majority of the times. And sometimes it's very severe. Like a person says, I can't stand up in the salah. I, I'm too severe for me. Okay? Now salah, hardship can be uplifted from it. It's not, it's not hard. It can't be. This person is finding in that prayer, mashakka to stand. Hardship is causing him severe pain. Are we all together brothers? So what we say to them is, the hadith of the Prophet where Imran ibn Hussein where the Prophet says to him, Salli qa'iman, pray standing up, fa'in lam tasta'ti' fa'qa'idan, fa'in lam tasta'ti' fa'ala jamb. Are we all together, yes or no? Pay attention here. Are we all together? So he said, pray standing up. He said, I can't. If you can't, then sit down. If you can't, then lie down. Because Majority of people can't stand up. There's no. Do you find hardship in standing up? Huh? You find hardship in standing up? So hardship can't be detached from it. And sometimes it can happen, hardship. This one is mu'tabara. We take your pain into consideration. We say to you, sit down. The second one is khafifa. Is what? Khafifa. It's easy. There is hardship. But it's easy. He's been playing football all day. He's a little kid. He goes and plays football all day. He's running around. He's playing football. And now Salah time came in. He's like, whoa, I'm tired. I'm tired. I can't stand up. And he pushes a chair and he sits on it. And he wants to pray in a chair. Yes, there is hardship for him because he was playing football. But the scholars, they say, غير معتبرة. It's khafif. This is light. It didn't come from a physical pain. Stand up, brother. If you can pray for two hours football, you can't stand up in the salah for ten minutes. So you'll be told, stand up to pray. Are we all together, brothers? All this is just to get it easy for you. Allah, it's not mumbabit. I can't. Mashaka cannot be narrowed down. It's hard, it's very hard. But it's just to make it easy. And the second one is mutaraddid. I'm a mutawasit. I'm a mutawasita. The one that's mutawasita is that. Is it Azima or is it Khafifa? It's in the middle. Some scholars are pushing it to the Azima and some scholars are pushing it to the Khafifa. And because of the many khilaf happens regarding it. Some people say, you know what, it's lifted up, it's lifted from you. 
And another group of scholars may say, it's a light. Man up. The fatwa changes in this one, from person to person. Are we all together, brothers? This one differs from person to person. Now I want to go into these three, and I'm going to conclude, inshallah ta'ala, with it today. Al-darura to tubihu al Qawa'id that fall under this. Three, again, just three. Three principles that fall. That what? Three principles that fall under what? al to tajribu al It falls under it. What's the first one? Al-darurat tubihu al Al-darurat means what? Necessity. It permits for you that which is haram. Are we all together, brothers? Okay. Mahvur is something which is haram. Let me explain something to you. Something which is muharramun li datihi. Something which is muharramun saddan Muharramun saddan li I want you to understand this. When you look at the haram, it's two types. Something which is haram in and within itself, like zina, okay, or drinking khamar. Are we all together, brothers? Or lying. All of those are haram, lidatihi, in and within itself. Haram is, lying is haram in and within itself. Killing is haram in and, in and within itself. Are we all together? Zina is haram in and, in and within itself. Does everyone understand? Brothers, are you with me? Those things are haram in and within its, in and within itself. It's haram. In itself is haram. The second is, it's not haram in and within itself. It's not haram in and within itself. It's haram because it's going to lead to something haram. This thing is not haram. It is haram now, but not because of itself. It's haram because it's going to lead to something haram. And an example for that is looking at a woman. Looking at a woman is not haram in and within itself. It's haram because of what? Because it's going to lead to zina. It's going to lead to what? Saddan li dhari'ah. It was made prohibited for what? Saddan li dhari'ah. It was prohibited because it's going to lead to something haram. Does that make sense? Are we all together, brothers? Here is a golden qaida, golden benefit, which is anything which is haram in and within itself only becomes permissible when there's a darura, necessity. When something is haram, not in and within itself, but what is going to lead to, it doesn't have to reach darura. Less than darura can permit it. Haja can permit it for you. A haja. Let me repeat that one more time. If something is haram in and within itself, muharramu lidati, haram in and within itself, like drinking khamar, is haram lidati. There's no other way you can drink that khamar unless it's a state, it's a state of life and death situation. A barura. It's a life and death situation. Barura. Necessity. You have to. You have no other alternative. Are we all together, brothers? Ah. That's when it's haram in and within itself. Lying is haram in and within itself. It only becomes permissible. Somebody's going to kill you and there's no other way out of it except to lie. It's a necessity you can lie. Are we all together, brothers? Yes or no? Huh? Yes or no? Okay. And something which is haram, not in and within itself, but it's haram because it's going to lead to what? Because it's going to lead to something haram. It's going to lead to something haram. And that's why it was made haram. Like looking at a woman. The same woman I could not look at. What about if I want to marry her? If I now want to go marry this woman, am I allowed to look at her? I'm asking you all a question. Yeah? 
Are you allowed to look at her? Is it a darura to look at her, marry her? When you're marrying her, to need to look at her, is that a necessity? No, it's not a necessity. Is that a life-death situation, brothers? Some brothers are like, yeah. <laughs> it is a life-and-death situation for us. Are we all together, brothers? It's not a necessity, right? It doesn't have to reach necessity. It's permitted, permitted less than that. Haja. The fact is just a, a need. Are we all together, brothers? Ubiyahat, it's made permissible. Does that make sense? So when you hear this qa'idah, al-darurat, tubihu mahdurat, the things which are muharramun lidati, you can't just say, ah, there was a little need. It has to be a necessity. It's a higher level, which is darura. Okay? Necessity permits that which is haram inan within itself. Ma, another qa'idah. مَا أُبِيحَ لِلْضَرُورَةِ يُقَدَّرُ بِقَدَرِهَا Anything that was made permissible based on necessity, you can only take from it in accordance to the necessity. يُقَدَّرُ بِقَدَرِهَا You have to take the amount of the need. Let's say for example, somebody is eating food and something stuck on their throat and they're about to die and they grabbed an alcohol. And they opened it and they drank it just to move what's in their throats. That's permissible. What about if you said, Wallah, this is nice. Let me take it home. Wallah, I'm going to drink it tomorrow as well. No. You are only allowed for it to remove your what? From whatever is there. Now it's fine. Are you fine? Ha, ah, go. We're in the middle of the desert. We're about to die from hunger. We saw a dead animal. We cut, we cut it up. We ate it. We cooked it. We ate. The brother with me, because I wouldn't do that, but the brother with me, he said, let's take it in our bag. Akhi, no. We were only allowed to eat now what can fill us. Taking extra and this is that. Ma ubiha lidbarura yuqaddaru biqadariha. Whatever necessity, you have to match it. Some people, they go overboard. A, man, a doctor has to see a woman, methylen, he has to see a woman's aura, a particular part of her body. Because he's a necessity came. He has to do surgery. He can only see that part of the body where he's doing the surgery. He can't tell her, take off all of your clothes. Are we all together? Only the amount he needs to see. If he needs to see her head, he can't look at her leg. Are we all together? Number three. Pay attention. I became hungry. We're in the middle of the desert. We're starving. We're about to die. We saw a goat. Necessity allowed us to what? Slaughter it. We're about to die, we're allowed to. Because the qa'idah of darura tubihu. Tubihu. Mahdurat. We're about to die. We're in a necessity to eat. Are we all together? We're in a state of necessity. So we saw a goat. What did we do to the goat? We slaughtered it. We ate it. When we ate that, the person who owned it, his right will not be lifted. As soon as we finish it, we say, how much did the goat cost? Are we all together? How much is your goat worth? And he goes, my goat's worth this much. Why? Why did you ask? We were about to die and we ate it. He can't say, why did you eat it? Because <laughs> But we can't use it as an excuse and say, what was the darura? We don't have to pay you, brother. No. It doesn't lift the what? The rights of others. But it does in one situation, which is if we kill it because that goat wanted to kill us. We were defending ourselves. It died. We're not going to pay the person who owns it anything. Are we all together? But if we ate out of hunger that we needed to, 
then we have to pay the person who took, we took it from. I'll stop there inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayh. Tadal. Yeah? Huh? No, but it wasn't yours. Somebody else's goat. He said, is the goat haram to eat? I said, no. But the reason why it's haram is because it's someone else's goat. You didn't take their permission. We saw a goat somewhere by itself. And we don't own it. Someone owns it. So we slaughtered it. It's haram for us to eat somebody else's goat. صح? It's a necessity why we're eating it because we're about to die. But what do you have to do then? I have to pay the person their money for their goat. Um, any questions? Repeat the question. Last time we took that if two Muslims fight one another, both of them are in the hellfire. Mm. Kill one another. Sahih. Uh -huh. Defending himself. Uh -huh. Sahih. Anyone who is killed in defending himself, he was attacked by someone and he's defending himself, then this individual has the rights to defend himself. The Prophet he said, Man duna malihi Anyone who is killed defending his wealth, defending his nafs, he's killed. The Prophet he said, He's a martyr, he's a shaheed. Defending himself. But the hadith. It's talking about Muslims who are fighting in a what? A fight of fitna. Fitna happening between the Muslims. And people are fighting for tribal reasons. For political reasons. Huh? What's the difference? Worldly reasons. They're killing each other for worldly reasons. Someone said something about you. Go and you want to kill them. And the other one wants to kill you. Or you, your tribe wants to kill his tribe وَهَكَذَا no like in anyone who is attacked he can defend himself الْعِلْمُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ بَارَكْتَ it's true even when it comes to saving yourself it's a barura for you to kill, to defend yourself. But that defending has to be in accordance to the ability to the... If you know somebody wants to come and he wants to rob your wealth, he's a thief. He came through the window. He has no weapon. He just wants to snatch something and leave the house. So if you just, hey, I saw you, huh? he hears your voice, he'll run out. But you get a gun out and you shoot him in the head. No, lay You're not allowed to. Or he's, he comes into the house, all you just need to do is stick, hit him with a stick, and he'll run away. That's all you need. You can only use the force that's needed to repel this harm. But you can't get a bazooka and blow him off. And he's got nothing. Now. Fadban. Are you a Maliki? Ah, that's a Maliki Madhab. The Maliki Madhab, I didn't go into it. It wasn't written on my notes. The Maliki Madhab, when it comes to Al-Yaqeen, they flip the issue. They say 
the certainty is no one has wudu. You never had wudu in the first place. That's the certainty. Prove you have wudu. They agree on the qa'idah, but the application of the qa'idah, Shmalikiyah, take a root different to that. So there's a valid difference of the scholars within the Maliki madhab. I had that, but I didn't want to go into too much tafasil, too much details. But I mentioned it in the sharh of our qawaid al fiqiyah when we did Ahmad Nasr Saudi. I mentioned it there. Yeah. Fadl. That which seems apparent to me, well, ilmu indallah, knowledge is with Allah, is that it goes back to the custom of the people. Whatever the people consider traveling is traveling, and if the people don't consider it traveling, then it's not traveling. It goes back to the people and the land. Now. If you've left your... Yeah, if the people of the land consider it and they say that, then yes. If they say that, then yes, it is. But if within one city, from one place to another place is two days, and the people don't consider it to be traveling, then it's not traveling. Does that make sense? It goes back to what the people... Say for example, do the people here consider Ajman to be traveling? Yeah? Ajman. Is Ajman considered? Yeah? Ikhtalaf al-ulama. Scholars, they differed in this issue. Some group of the scholars here, they said it's... <laughs> no. And the scholars here, they said... Who believes Ajman is traveling? Who says that... Uh, Abu Dhabi is traveling. Everybody agrees Abu Dhabi. You get, where, where did you guys find that Abu Dhabi is traveling? Urf. <laughs> Custom. Where did you guys get from? Uh, Ajman is not traveling. By the way, Ajman and Dubai both, both, are two different cities to Dubai. Abu Dhabi and Ajman are two different cities. Sahih, true or false? Are they not? How is it that one of them, you said what? He said, it's not traveling. And the other one you said, it is traveling. When there are two different cities. If you're coming from Jabal Ali, and you go to Ajman, is what? It could become an hour or something, right? And if I was leaving from the edge of Dubai, from the Abu Dhabi road, I could probably get to Abu Dhabi before the person gets to Ajman. This is the same. The distance is the same. The reality is the urf. If you hold on to this distance and day and it's problematic. It's better to just see what the people believe. Yeah, there's people who say that. 80 kilometers and things like that. The best thing, brothers, is Allah mentioned the Quran. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ Did Allah mention how much it is? Did one hadith say that traveling is this amount? There isn't. There isn't. The sharia, the reason when the sharia doesn't give a definition to a word, where do we go back to? Urf. We go back to the custom of the people. We know that many examples in the Quran. Say to the people, good. Husna, good. Hey, what good? What good do I say to the people? It goes back to the custom. In one culture, if you say this word, ooh, 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 what do you just say? But in another culture, if you say this, very good, husna. Sah? Does that make sense? The ayah left it unrestricted because it wants you to use it in your own culture. In your own? You know the scholars of hadith, they never used to take knowledge from a person who was drinking and what? He was walking. If they saw someone outside, 
drinking, standing up and walking, no hadith. Because for them this was khawarim al muru'ah. It went against what? The moral conduct of a Muslim. Does that apply now? Does it apply now? Yeah? It doesn't. If you somebody so you saw somebody drink outside. But what about if you saw a sheikh who was wearing a vest? A sheikh was wearing a vest. I'm asking you guys, brothers. He was wearing a vest. And he was wearing a uh, quarter length, just above his knees. And he's wearing a vest. You can see his arms and everything. Hey, yeah. What do you think? Is that all right? And he said, Inna alhamdulillahi nahamaduhu wa nasa. Is that fine? What's wrong? What's your delil? What's your delil to say what he's doing is wrong? No delil, you can say wrong. His body is covered. No aura. What are you saying? Why are you saying it's wrong? The custom. It's the custom you're using. He said, Ooh, what's he doing? As soon as he comes in for the khutbah, everybody's like, A'udhu billah, A'udhu billah. Sah. But he's dr- nothing wrong. He's wearing clothes. Sah, brothers. The urf takes, the custom is very important. Are you with me, brothers? Custom is what? It's very important. Hey, yeah. Say that again. It might change. Ah. So, hey. The frequency is not an issue. But would anybody consider that the time that you go is a traveling? So it's still traveling. It's still traveling. The frequency doesn't change it. The fact that the person keeps doing it all the time. If somebody, for example, every single week, three days he's in India, and the other four days he's in Dubai, and he's doing that, that doesn't change the fact that he's still traveling. However frequent he's doing it. He's a traveler. Yeah, travelers. For the rest of their life, they're travelers while they're doing that. The frequency doesn't change anything. Now. Mm-hmm. A traveler combining and shorting is the same thing. Mm. A traveler can combine and he can shorten. No. No, they don't believe it. Sahih. There are many hadiths that are against them on the issue of al-jamah. The hadith of Abbas in Sahih Muslim is against them. But the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, combining the prayer. No, they don't allow it. You don't have to take it. A rukhsa, you don't have to take it. You can take it if you want to. Are you? Like, when it comes to issues of safety and things like that, I always generally like people to go to the senior scholars. Questions like that are very, very delicate. They're very delicate issues of what's taking place right now around the Muslim world. Matters like that, I very strongly encourage people. I always say to them, those issues that your local imam or your weekly teacher. That's not his job to talk about that. The honest truth. These needs a legend. Wallah, wallah. It needs a committee of scholars. 
صراحة for them to give answers and responses to these issues the scholars they said لو سكت من لا يعلم if the one who doesn't know was quiet there would be less dispute in the Muslim Ummah just left it to the people of knowledge he let them speak about it I know what's happening around the world I see it, I hear it, I'm fully aware of it but it's not my place to talk about it if I do I'll be questioned Imam Allah Ta'ala the Day of Judgment but these issues take it to people who are very senior in age old people of age Sarahatan. you'll find an answer that's built upon knowledge and wisdom it's built upon knowledge and a lot of wisdom and I growing up I see so much things are changing in my life the way I see them but the old person is being through all of those hurdles he's to be through all of those hurdles and the knowledge is there for him so when it comes to issues of like that take it to those people inshallah ta'ala and Sheikh Suleiman al-Ruhayl is coming on today صح? is it today Sheikh Suleiman al-Ruhayl I think it's today he's coming it's best to go to him and speak to him about it inshallah ta'ala When you come to your place of residence, you're no longer a traveler. Once you come home, you're not a traveler. You have to play normal. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khairan.